10 Best Picks presents the Top 10 Best College Laptops. Starting at number 10. Asus VivoBook 15. The Asus VivoBook 15 costs $399 and, like some other lower-priced options from Asus, manages to deliver a premium look befitting a notebook twice the price. Given the price, the overall size and weight of the VivoBook 15, a laptop with a 15. 6-inch screen is a pleasant surprise as well. Unfortunately, things fall apart a bit from there, the display is dim, and dull and the battery life is short even for a laptop in this price range. Performance holds up okay for simple web work, but anything more taxing is going to be painfully slow on its Intel Core i3-1005G1 to processor. There are some nice design touches on the Asus VivoBook 15, and, if you need a laptop at this price point, there are certainly worse options out there. However, you should consider taking a look at our best laptops under $500, or, if Windows 10 isn't a necessity, our best Chromebooks rankings for other options. My review model of the VivoBook 15 is priced at $399 and comes with an Intel Core i3 to 1005G1 processor, 8GB of RAM and a 128GB SSD and Intel UHD graphics. There is one other Intel variant of the VivoBook 15 F512 available, the F512 JAAS54, which steps you up to an Intel i5 to 1035G1 CPU and 512GB of storage for $599. Alternatively, there's an AMD option, the VivoBook 15 F512DA, which includes a Ryzen 7 3700U processor and 512GB of storage for $649 the VivoBook 15's 15. 6-inch, 1920x1080 display produces sharp images, but I found the colors were washed out, and the panel overall was quite dim. Watching the trailer for the live-action remake of Mulan, the VivoBook 15 couldn't reproduce the vivid red of the titular character's costume, and left the rich and varied environments feeling drab and listless. The screen also suffers from a somewhat aggressive sweet spot when it comes to your viewing position. If you get just a bit off-center in any direction, the image falls off quickly. At number 9. Acer Swift 3. The Acer Swift 3 certainly exceeds expectations for a budget laptop. Cheaper laptops don't usually come with big expectations, but the Swift line proves once again that a portable doesn't have to have a lofty price tag to be competent enough to impress, let alone consistently ranked, as among our favorite ultrabooks. Not that the Acer Swift 3 is the epitome of budget laptops. This 2020 update has inherited some of the previous model's flaws, such as the tinny, downward-facing speakers. However, what it could improve upon without raising the price it has, prioritizing upgrades in performance and battery life over the older models. The result is a solid device that can hold its own against the likes of the premium Dell XPS 13 in performance, while offering better value for a much lower price of entry. The 14-inch Acer Swift 3 model we reviewed is the $699 model, which features a 10th gen Intel Core i5 to 1035G1 processor, 8GB of DDR4 RAM, integrated Intel UHD graphics, and a 512GB M2 Psi SSD. Acer continued its minimalist design aesthetic with this year's Acer Swift 3. Definitely taking a cue from the Apple MacBook Air, the thin, lightweight aluminum chassis should feel familiar to anyone acquainted with earlier Acer Swift 3 models. The matte silver finish with polished Acer logo on the back is about as flashy as the laptop gets, and, for some, that's exactly what they're looking for. Needless to say, you will have to supply the personality yourself. After running the Acer Swift 3 through a suite of benchmark tests for its CPU, GPU, and battery, we're pleased to say that there's a measurable improvement over last year's model. When it comes to playing video in general use, there's little to complain about with the Acer Swift 3. Running the notoriously resource-hogging Google Chrome with two dozen tabs open was handled smoothly by the Swift 3, even when one of those tabs was playing through a Udemy course and another had an active Slack channel going. The latest Acer Swift 3 is an excellent ultrabook for the masses, made better thanks to its accessible price, thin and lightweight design, and pretty decent battery life. Number 8 of my list. HP Pavilion 15. The HP Pavilion 15 is a 15. 6 laptop with a full HD IPS touchscreen, 
512GB fast SSD, Ryzen 5 to 3500U processor and 8GB of RAM. There are other models in the range, but this one offers a good balance between performance and price. It's currently around £550 or $600, but prices vary. It's not the flashiest laptop. It's predominantly plastic, there's number 360 degree hinge, and it's not super lightweight. But it's fast enough to run pretty much anything, and can even handle some light gaming with its integrated Vega 8 graphics. The right side has the memory card reader, a Kensington security slot, two standard USB Type-A ports, and the charging port with its accompanying LED. The USB ports are all USB 3. 1 Gen 1 so support a maximum of 5 Gbps, not the 10 Gbps of the more recent Gen 2, but that should still be plenty quick enough for most accessories you'll plug in for the time being. The South Dakota card slot is useful, but limited to slow USB 2. Zero speeds as seems to unfortunately be the norm. Opening the lid reveals a chiclet style keyboard with a number pad. The keyboard is in backlit like on some models in the range. The 1920x1080 Full HD screen has an IPS touchscreen panel that is one of the highlights of the laptop. There's number 360 degree hinge to really take advantage of the touch display, but that would bump up the price. The hinge tilts back to just 130 degrees, and the base of the lid then becomes a large rear foot for the laptop, tilting the keyboard slightly. The HP Pavilion 15 is a very capable laptop, I don't really think you could ask for a much better spec for the price. The build quality is generally good, and it looks quite stylish, but there's more flex in the lid than I'd like, and together with its all-plastic build and lack of a 360-degree hinge, you'll have to take a little extra care with it. The Risen processor and generously sized fastened Mi SSD really make the laptop feel quick in both general use and more intensive tasks. If you wanted to use it for heavy-duty work regularly you have the option of upgrading the memory to 16 GB. Coming at number 7. Lenovo IdeaPad 3. It runs Windows 10 S, which means you're restricted to Windows Store apps, unless you switch it to full Windows 10. You can do this for free in a matter of seconds, although we'll see some performance compromises. The Lenovo IdeaPad 3 has an Intel Core series processor, one more powerful than the typical Windows 10 S laptop. So why is Windows 10 S even here? The laptop has limited RAM and storage, and the restricted software is a heads-up of who it's meant for. The Lenovo IdeaPad 3 keyboard also suggests this laptop is meant more for work than play. While there's a certain hollow sound to key presses ringing through the plastic shell, if you type hard, this is actually a lovely keyboard for long-form typing. Key action is unusually high, resulting in a much deeper feel than almost every top-price laptop. Each depress comes with a chunky clonk, rather than a thin click. It's a joy to type on, particularly considering the Lenovo IdeaPad 3's price. You don't, however, get any glossy extras. The Lenovo IdeaPad 3 does not have a keyboard backlight, and there's no fingerprint sensor for quick logins. The Lenovo IdeaPad 3 has an Intel Core i3 to 1000 5G1 processor, 4GB RAM and a 128GB SSD drive. This lineup had me wondering why the IdeaPad 3 comes with Windows 10s instead of full Windows. A Core i3 to 1000 5G1 is much more powerful than the kind of Intel Pentium Gold processor that usually gets the cutdown OS. As ever, there's nothing wrong with a Core i3. The Lenovo IdeaPad 3 has a 35WH battery, a fairly low capacity for a laptop you might want to take out to work somewhere far from a power socket. And, guess what, its longevity is not particularly good. The Lenovo IdeaPad 3 has a keyboard made for work, and enough power for some fun, but the IdeaPad 3 is let down by a poor screen and relatively short battery life. At number 6. Lenovo Flex 5. The Lenovo IdeaPad Flex 5 14 punches far above its weight. This $600 2-in-win convertible laptop offers better computing performance than many competitors that cost more than twice as much. It's also got decent physical connectivity options, a sturdy, well-designed chassis, and a comfortable keyboard. While the Flex 5's 14-inch display could be brighter, and it could stand to lose a few ounces, it's nevertheless a screaming good value and an excellent mainstream laptop. 
Other than the rather heavy chassis, the Flex 5's only other noteworthy flaw is its screen, which suffers from a relatively dim backlight rated for just 250 nits of brightness. I had to turn the screen brightness up to the maximum level to view in a daylight lit living room. The display is fine for darker homes, but any brightly lit environments, including offices, might reduce its visibility. You might expect that a 6-core Risen 5 would have a larger negative effect on battery life than, say, the dual-core Core M3 and the Surface Go 2. While that's technically true, AMD and Lenovo have apparently succeeded in ensuring that the effect is minimal. The Flex 5 lasted for more than 16 hours in our video rundown test, which involves looping a locally stored 720p video at 50% screen brightness with airplane mode turned on. The Flex 5 proves it's possible to offer performance acceptable for light gaming or occasional number crunching and multimedia editing in a laptop that costs far less than category flagships like the Dell XPS 13 or the Apple MacBook Pro. While the chassis could be a bit lighter and the screen a bit brighter, the capabilities of the Risen 5 processor outweigh these deficiencies. The Flex 5 is therefore our new top pick in the crowded field of mid-range 2-in-1 convertible laptops. Thanks to a brand new AMD Risen processor, Lenovo's IdeaPad Flex 514 offers an extraordinary blend of performance and value for money, making it one of the best popularly priced 2-in-1 convertibles we've tested. For more information and price, check out the product links in description, underneath the video. Halfway of my listed number 5. Acer Aspire 5. Another winner in a long line of budget-priced workhorses, the latest version of the Acer, Aspire 5 graduates to Intel's Ice Lake CPU and packs in enough power to tackle daily computing tasks with ease. This new Aspire 5 model does come saddled with a few compromises, including a cramped storage drive and so-so battery life, but its solid multi-core performance and impressive array of ports make up for those shortcomings, particularly once you consider its affordable price. Last year, we saw versions of the Aspire 5 in various dual and quad-core configurations of Intel's Core Whiskey Lake CPUs and AMD Ryzen 3000 series chips. Now, in the second half of 2020, the Aspire 5 is moving to 10th generation Intel processors and AMD Ryzen series 4000 CPUs, with configurations ranging from quad-core all the way to octo-core. Sticker prices for the Aspire 5 line remain decidedly wallet-friendly, ranging from $400 from a dual-core Intel Core i3 to 1005G1 model to $850 for a quad-core i7 to 10510U system with discrete NVIDIA Jefferson MX250 graphics. The Acer Aspire 5's overall design hasn't changed since last year, and that's a good thing. With its 15. 6-inch display, the Aspire 5 demands a relatively large chassis. Unlike the incredibly light but far pricier LG Gram, the laptop feels just as heavy as it looks. Still, the Aspire 5's tapered shell and its sleek, sandblasted aluminum lid give the system a premium feel that belies its budget price tag. As with the other models that I've tested from this particular series, the Acer Aspire 5's backlit keyboard made for pleasurable typing. The keys themselves offered plenty of travel and a springy, satisfying rebound. While there are no dedicated media playback keys, you do get a dedicated 10-key numeric keypad, along with dedicated hotkeys for airplane mode, sleep mode, and a display on-off toggle. The power button in the top right corner of the keyboard only turns off the laptop after it's long pressed, and even then there's a confirmation pop-up to ensure you don't shut down the laptop accidentally. As I said before, it's a treat to see a budget laptop with not only a super-speed USB-C port for the latest high-speed storage devices, but also two super-speed USB Type-A ports and a USB 2.0 port. The wired Ethernet port is a nice bonus too. Coming in at number 4 of my list, Acer Nitro 5. In November 2018, we reviewed an under $700 AMD Ryzen 5 powered version of Acer's 15. 6-inch Nitro 5 budget gaming laptop. Today, we're doing it again. What's changed, aside from the new Nitro, being $30 cheaper? Well, the 2018 rig had a quad-core Risen 5 2500U processor and barely managed 30 frames per second in 1080p gaming. 
This one has AMD's new Ryzen 5 4600H, a 6-core chip that's priced like an Intel Core i5, but slugs it out with Core i7 CPUs and approaches 60 FPS in top titles. It makes compromises for its low price, but if you can't afford our $999 editor's choice, the MSI Bravo 15, you will find it a terrific value. The Nitro 5 has neither a face recognition webcam, nor a fingerprint reader to let you skip passwords with Windows Hello. The 720p webcam is a typical laptop economy model that captures soft focus, noisy shots. Audio doesn't get very loud, it'll fill a small room, but isn't bad, short on bass, but clear and mellow. DTSX Ultra software lets you choose among music, movie, voice, strategy, RPG, and shooter presets or play with an equalizer. I compared the Nitro 5's performance to that of four other gaming laptops. All are among the more affordable we've tested lately, but it's important to note that only the MSI GL659SC is down in the Acer's price range. The MSI Bravo 15 and Lenovo IdeaPad Gaming 3i are about $1,000 each, while the Dell G515SE is in the $1,200 ballpark. You can see their specs in the table below. The synthetic tests above are helpful for measuring general 3D aptitude, but it's hard to beat full retail video games for judging gaming performance. Far Cry 5 and Rise of the Tomb Raider are both modern AAA titles with built-in benchmark routines. We run these tests at 1080p resolution using both moderate and maximum graphics quality presets, normal and ultra for Far Cry 5 under DirectX 11, medium and very high for Rise of the Tomb Raider under DirectX 12. It's short on storage, but the latest edition of Acer's Nitro 5 Economy Gaming Laptop is otherwise the best yet, delivering lively 1080p gamma play for less than $700. At number 3. Acer Chromebook Spin 311. The Acer Chromebook Spin 311 is a great little Chromebook that has impressive levels of versatility, as well as satisfying interaction and usability. Just using the Acer Chromebook Spin 311 is a joy, and the design and build quality of this device are also immediately apparent, as soon as you take it out of the box. The design of the Acer Chromebook Spin 311 is sleek and subtle, sticking to black to make it as unobtrusive aesthetically as possible, while the diamond-shaped pattern detailing on the back of the screen is a nice touch too. Embedded into the black chassis, the keyboard and touchpad are as easy as ever to use on a Chromebook. Satisfying and punchy, with pleasing clicks and actuation, even typing and other menial tasks is satisfying. The Acer Chromebook Spin 311 really is a compact little machine, and its design, build and aesthetic complements its size enormously. Firstly, it's a symphony in black, blacks on the back, on the keyboard and surrounding the screen. But this makes the whole aesthetic cohesive and attractive for a little Chromebook. The main body of the Acer Chromebook Spin 311 is the similar matte black material, but the top or back of the screen has a very cool diamond print panel. This feels like it could be for added durability to protect the screen, but aesthetically it really works too, adding texture and a fun quirk to the design. It's particularly nice that the touchpad is of the same ilk, easy, responsive and satisfying to use. However, that satisfaction is not matched by what is on screen, as we had to increase the brightness a fair chunk to see pictures more clearly. This inevitably came at the cost of battery life. The Acer Chromebook Spin 311's versatility makes it a great all-rounder supported by good battery life and great interactivity. For more information and price, check out the product links in description, underneath the video. Coming at number 2, new Apple MacBook Air. In a week of testing, I have pushed this computer and its new Apple-made processor to its limits and found that those limits exceeded my expectations on nearly every level. I've also used it in the way a MacBook Air is really meant to be used as an everyday computer for workaday tasks. When doing so, I clocked 8 and sometimes 10 hours of continuous use on battery. Coming into this review, I had a catalog of potential pitfalls that Apple could have fallen into when switching from an Intel chip to its own processor. Chip transitions are devilishly hard and don't usually go smoothly. This MacBook Air not only avoids almost all of those pitfalls, but it gleefully leaps over them. Not everything is perfect, of course. 
Apple's insistence on using dumpy webcams continues to be a bummer, and running iPad apps is a mess. But as I used the MacBook Air, I often found myself so impressed that I had a hard time believing it. Apple is claiming that this machine can get 18 hours of video playback and 15 hours of wireless web, both of which are very large claims. The company tells me I should expect battery life to be as much as 50% better than the last Air, and the battery inside this computer isn't any bigger than the previous models. All of those improvements come down to increased efficiency. My actual results? I'm getting between 8 and 10 hours of real, sustained work depending on how hard I am pushing it. That's not quite 50% better than the last MacBook Air, but it's very close. For pro users, there are still improvements Apple needs to make to increase performance on the top end for intense workloads. You can't run an external graphics card, and you're limited to just one external display at a time, for example, and it's likely that a true pro would find the ceiling on this integrated GPU fairly quickly. But as an everyperson computer, there is nothing like this MacBook Air. It has very good battery life, incredible performance for its class, and yes, a good keyboard. Too bad about the webcam, though. It's the main reason we couldn't give this laptop a 10 tenths, which we were considering. And number 1. Acer Aspire 5. There are two types of laptops I've come to expect from Acer, standout premium models like the Crazy Swift 7 Ultra Portable and Predator Triton 900, and mainstream laptops that are impossibly good deals, like last year's Predator Helios 300 and this year's Acer Aspire 5. For more than a year, Acer's Aspire E15 was my go-to pick for anyone who just needed a quick reliable laptop for general use around the home. Sadly, that model is getting harder to find, but the Aspire 5 is an excellent alternative that's thinner, lighter and still an impossibly good deal. Starting at $400 with an Intel processor, or $350 with an AMD chip, the 15.6-inch Aspire 5 is only 3.8 pounds and 0.7-inch thick. That combination of size, weight and price isn't easy to find with a 15.6-inch display. By comparison, the Acer E15 had the same screen size, but was more than 5 pounds and just over an inch thick. It also started at roughly the same price and was similarly configured. You do lose things like an South Dakota card reader, a GA display output, and a DVD drive, but chances are it's only the card reader that matters to more people at this point, if anything. Like any budget-friendly laptop worth its salt, Acer puts most of your money toward good internal components and not into things like an all-metal chassis or an ultra-bright high-res touchscreen. For example, my Aspire 5 had a similar configuration to Lenovo's Premium Yoga C932 in one. Performance is about the same between the two, but the Yoga is twice the price. What's more, you can pop the Aspire's bottom off and add more memory or increase storage on your own something fewer and fewer premium models will let you do. The Acer Aspire 5 is a 15.6 inch thin and light that definitely delivers more performance for your money than you might expect. Though it starts low, the $530 configuration I tested is a comfortable middle ground that's full featured enough for typical work, home, and school tasks. But even if you decide to go all out on upgrades, this model doesn't break the $900 mark, and you'll get a workhorse laptop that won't win any beauty contests, but should last you well into the future. For more information and price, check out the product links in description, underneath the video. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe my channel, share this video and hit the like button.